All right, so we have, let's just review really quickly how we've set this up. We have a blank white background. That's my white bread on the bottom. In the middle, I have flat color. It's my first layer on my sandwich. Then on top of my flat color, I built up cut edge color, both highlights and shadows. So you can see all of those really sharply cut out. Looks a bit, bit messy without the line work on top of it, right? And what's interesting is I can still edit these individual things. So I actually don't like this dark mark in here. So I can just select it and fill it with a different blue. Let's actually go for something even lighter. Yeah, I like that a lot better, right? And I can always augment it. So you're asking, how do I fix it, right? Just by painting right into those layers. Nothing wrong with just changing the pixels directly. I'm just trying to show you different ways to think about it. And there might be little, little areas that are messed up, but those are not uncommon in coloring and you shouldn't sweat it. You don't need to worry about line work, just the coloring underneath. This is like the glass behind your stained glass tracing, right? I might decide at this stage, to just drop in some extra highlights, like on these arrows on my heart. And then on top of the color goes the black line work. That's the black bread on top. Kind of cleans it all up. Okay, now the only one I have on is what's called cut edge. And you can see how sharp that is. And it looks pretty good. I'm not unhappy with it. Looks fine. The other option I have for sandwich filling, so this is ham, let's say. I like a ham sandwich just fine. Maybe I want a turkey sandwich though. And this is soft edge duotone. So it's a little different. Now remember, how did I get the soft edge duotone? All I did was take my cut edge and gaussian blur it. So because it's gaussian blurred, it is lower in opacity than the cut edge. So if I turn on, if I put the ham down first and then put the turkey over it, I'll still taste the ham. So let's turn them both on and now you'll see them combined, right? Where it's just kind of a slightly blurry <laughs> cut edge. Now, if I take my turkey and say, I like the ham more than the turkey, so let me dial back the turkey with my opacity. I can find kind of the right level of coloring I'm looking for. And I can still mess with individual parts of it, just like I did with my cut edge. But because it's soft edge, it's a little bit more difficult to do. So here's, I'm going to show you how you can augment your soft edge even more. I'm going to dodge and burn it because soft edges are very forgiving. So if I dodge, which is to lighten the midtones, I can bring out the highlights even more. And usually I would say don't use it above 30%, but here we can be a little bit more aggressive if we want to. Especially where we think it got a little dark by blurring it. So that was a lot of dodging. See what kind of difference that made in my history.
if I like it or not. Because like I said, I often overdo it. But I think I, I do like it. The same thing you can do uh, with burning. The problem is I was dodging my shadows <laughs> instead of my uh, highlights. So it just kind of lightened everything. So what is a safe way for me to dodge and burn? Do you guys remember from when we did the creature scape? Oh, that's, that makes, makes me so happy to hear it. Yes, we're going to create a gradient overlay layer instead. So on top of my soft edge, I'm going to turn off my cut edge on top. On top of my soft edge, I'll make a new layer. I'm going to fill it with 50% gray. I'm going to set it to overlay mode, and then I'm going to dodge and burn on that. It will affect everything underneath. So I can do it all in the same layer. So let me turn on the background here. And you can see how it's affecting my background, but that's okay. I can delete that later. And I want to use a pressure sensitive brush. But maybe a little bit smaller so I can get a little bit more particular with where it gets brighter, especially in the tail. Give it kind of a core highlight. Make it look silky. But if I'm too specific, then it's not as effective. So playing up the highlights. in my soft edge. Now why can't I do this with my cut edge? Well, because the brush itself softens it, right? And I'm, cut edge is very disciplined, very clean. Okay, now on the same layer, I can burn the same overlay layer. Make it a little bit bigger. And especially in where the guts are, underside of the tail, I can burn more. But be careful not to get back to black or get or uh, dodge all the way to white because you need to have actual color content and value content beyond black and white to be able to dodge and burn. But this is all still just duotone color. All variations of the same tones. Okay, now how do I clean up on the outside of it? Well, I go to my copy of my vector layer, which contains it all. I cut out these little windows with my selection, and then I delete from my overlay layer. Voila. And I can see if that overlay layer is helping. And I think it certainly did. But if I think I overdid it, I can play with its opacity, dim it down a little bit. But I kind of like it. Let's go bold. Now I can put on my cut edge over the top of that, but then maybe take that whole folder and take its opacity down a little. Then I have to decide what I like best. I can also use blending modes like pin light, soft light, overlay, you know, find lots of different ways, darken, only darken, kind of bring all these things together. So I think this looks pretty good. It's normal at, at about 45%. Okay, so now I'm happy with my duotone color solution. Gonna save it.
So now the next step is to add some full spectrum. So what's an example of full spectrum? It's where it's more of a digital painting thing. It's a little over much for digital coloring behind line work. But full spectrum is when you mix multiple colors within one local area. So the place that seems obvious for me to do this is in the tail. To make it kind of like a, a multicolored rainbow tail. So I, I'm going to add some special effects now. And so one way for me to do this is to just select the flat color of the tail, which gives me the whole thing, duplicate that onto its own layer, because I'm just going to play with it on the, on the tail. Move that above all my coloring. And then basically use layer styles, do a gradient overlay on it, and do something like a rainbow. Then I can set its angle. There we go. I, I can set its um, scale. Oh, I think I had it. OK. And then I can set how it blends with the colors underneath. Oh, not like that. So I just do that. And then in order to make these actual pixels, like I just colored it that way, I'm going to right click and rasterize the layer style and then just play with the opacity, right? And tone it down a little bit. If I want to, I can up the saturation. So even though it's more um, less opaque, it's more intense. Right? And then I can even erase away from it at lower opacities, really soft at different sizes, especially for that kind of core highlight. Right? So a little subtle full spectrum color there. Now, what if I want to do full spectrum on everything? Not just replace all my color, but just give it kind of a warm and cool variation. So this is what I do. I turn off everything except my coloring. So I turn off my backgrounds. I turn off everything except just the coloring. I go to my top coloring layer, I hold down Option, and I say Layer, Merge Visible. Because I held down Option, it's now all combined. And I'm going to call this my Combined Color Layer, right? And I'm going to label this Full Spectrum Combined Color. So if I put it underneath my outline, let's try it on a gray background. Now I'm going to do that gradient overlay over the whole thing. But this time I'm going to blend it in with what's already underneath. See it only like 17%. I can play with a different scale of the rainbow. That's kind of nice. That's at 100% normal mode, right? But the effect, the actual layer style is only at 17%. So I can duplicate that to deepen it. And if I like that, I can combine them together. Another way to, to rasterize a layer style is to make a duplicate of it and then combine the duplicate with the original. So now it's just a regular layer. Do you guys see the difference? Now the whole thing's full spectrum. There's parts of it I like. I like it on the wing. I like it on the tail. I like it through the back part of the body, but not on the brand. And I don't like it on the, the skull or the snake. So what can I do? I take my eraser, 